When you and your spouse are both interior designers, you know that your home is going to undergo a major renovation. Hi, I'm Giselle Laura Sugarman, and this is my husband, Brett Sugarman, and we're the principals of B&G Design. We get to work on a lot of amazing projects for our clients, but today you're going to get to see our own personal home. Welcome to our little piece of paradise. Designing a home can be stressful. Add to that, being a couple. That could be the recipe for disaster or success. We'll see how this interior designer's remodel turned out on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra. As an interior designer, I know how difficult it can be to pick out items for your own home. Imagine when there's two of you trying to agree, but from the looks of the beautiful exterior of this house, looks like they agree just fine. I cannot wait to get this tour started, so let's go meet Brett and Giselle. Hi, welcome to our home. Hi, thank you. Hi. Hi. And nice to see you. Great to see you. You guys, welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. Thank you for having us. Excited to be here. It's always great to see a designer's own home. So when I first walked up to the house, it was like, you know, design professionals live here. It is gorgeous. The exterior thank is so you. stunning. Well, we have been uh, searching for new homes for a couple of years. Giselle was really spearheading that uh, project. And I got a call one day. I found it. It was really exciting. It definitely did not look like this. You had to have vision to be able to kind of see it, but who better than us to be able to see that vision? We knew we had to be a G, you know, give it, <laughs> give that, it stamp, your mark. Yes. Yeah, that stamp. And as a designer myself, I think picking stuff for yourself is the hardest because we see so much. That's right. You know, it kind of flowed a little more naturally than you would expect. Being a designer couple, we kind of reach a consensus. And because we like the same things naturally anyway, if one of us brought an idea to the other, it, it was a quick yay or nay. There wasn't a lot of deliberation. We really didn't make that many exterior structural changes, but we did completely change the roof. Originally, there was a concrete tile roof. Now we have a standing seam metal roof, which we love. We made some changes to the side that were subtle to most, but that had a lot of impact. Like the wood by the door, creating these different doors and windows to kind of give it a little bit of that California vibe we were going for and make it more earthy. And I noticed there's a great like sculptural piece and you had a, a very cool bench. What a little design out there as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we wanted to create, kind of create an entire site, not just the house itself. When we design for clients, we believe that the moment you hit a driveway of somebody's home, it should speak of what you're going to see and peek through the interior. So it's a nice transition. Well, it definitely led me in, and I'm seeing that transition as Thank we enter you. here. So let's go check out the living room. So this is considered your formal living room. Yes. yes. It's light, it's bright, it's got some cool accents. Give us a little background on that. The beauty of this home is that we created such a neutral palette. We wanted it to feel like an inviting space. We just pictured, okay, how are we gonna entertain here when we have this big Latin family of ours? They were able to sit on that whole fireplace, so that is like additional seating. In the original home, there was a wood-burning fireplace in this wall. We didn't want that look and we wanted to have a more concealed feeling, so the idea that this is like the welcoming hearth that you'd sit around the fire, but instead of a traditional fireplace, we used the ethanol burner. But we made this ledge extra deep so you can sit along the ledge and join the group here. So we've got white sofas. I know this is a family home. Tell us a little bit about how they look so good. The reality is the kids use it. Not very often, but our dog thinks he's a cat, so he'll drape himself over. It's performance fabric, so that helps. We designed the sofas, we designed the cocktail table. It looks like something you would see in a museum, and that was the whole idea, is that you would put your curated pieces or pieces of art inside the cocktail table so then it doesn't block when you're trying to put a drink or let's say you want to put some hors d'oeuvres or anything out there. It really highlights this and what you've got going on under this table. This is awesome. Well, this is actually a new piece that we just acquired. 
It's an Asseline book. Asseline is a specialized publisher that does giant coffee table books. So this is the sumo size this because it's book. ginormous. <laughs> And this is actually a new book about Rihanna. And it's on top of another piece of artwork, which is part of the whole assemblage. It's so cool. And what I love is that you said you made this table previous to buying this. We've yeah. had it for years. That's yeah. vision when you know that you're going to go buy a piece and it's like perfectly going to fit. Right. That's the designer eye right there. And, and in the formal living room, I think that's a space that you can be a little more daring with in terms of the choices as well, though. Absolutely. It's not the everyday room. Absolutely. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we find out why this design duo did away with their dining room. I'm Tacker Auto with FHIA, and a lot of times when you're doing construction, you run into unforeseen problems. We're gonna show you the resolution we found on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we're continuing our designer home tour with Giselle and Brett from B&G Design. And what's special about this tour is that it's your own home. Thank so. you. The kitchen is strategically placed. Every room in the house has access to it. It is definitely the heart of the home and has some amazing water views. I needed a kitchen like this because I am the chef of the house. She's the cooker, I'm the cleaner. And he likes, he'll go grocery shopping, so I yeah. love that. We have a, a nice little balance. When we first started, the kids were little, so the whole idea was that I would be cooking here, the bar stools are here, they would be doing homework. If they went outside, we'd be able to see them from outside the window. But the reality is, that happened a little bit, but it's definitely an entertainment kitchen. When you know when you go to somebody's house, doesn't matter how big the house is, everybody stands around the kitchen island. Yep, right here. And this is a huge island. So we have a 15-foot kitchen island, plenty of room for people. Absolutely, and I, I love the way you have at the end of this a large table at the end. When you were kind of designing this space, was the intent to always kind of make that as your central hub to dine? Well, absolutely. I mean, the house lives big, but it's really not that big square footage-wise, and we wanted to consolidate spaces. Well, and with that gorgeous light fixture above it, it really kind of makes it feel like a grand dining space. And that also works as a foyer fixture as well, because as soon as you come in, you have the background of the Calcutta slab, and you have the foyer fixture. It's all part of that layering where what's formal, what's informal kind of gets all blended in. I love the way you've done integral sinks. It looks like you've used the quartz and you don't see a lot of the appliances. You kind of wanted more of a minimalist feel. Well, being that it was in the middle of the entertaining part of the house, it comes off like furniture more than kitchen cabinets per se, but everything's here. We've got twin dishwashers, big built-in refrigerator right here. The ovens are really the only thing you see. No wall cabinets, but tons of storage. So yeah. you really thought through how you're gonna live in this space. Yeah, even underneath the stool area, there's a whole row of cabinets to store the things that you don't use every day. So I love that you created such an interesting way of foregoing a dining room and combining it with the island. It's very clever use of space. Thank you. And if we wanna add more seating, we've just added rental tables and we've been able to easily sit over 20 people. That's wonderful. And speaking of clever ideas, let's see what Pat Granada from Florida Home Improvement Associates has for us today. There's so many decisions when choosing this type of product and choosing this type of project to get done to your home, but it's so vital and so important to choose the right contractor, and this is a great example why. A lot of times, contractors come in and they just start ripping everything out and, de and doing a whole bunch of demolition without really taking the necessary care to see what's going on. And luckily, in this circumstance, they took things out really carefully, and when they started to take out the bottom windows, they started to recognize some things they were concerned about on the top geometric windows. They put a camera inside this opening to identify that this actual decorative shape is just that there's no structural support in it so by putting the camera inside the opening they were able to identify the issues without ripping everything out and that way the glass can stay here for temporarily while the engineering gets done and that way it can be installed properly to look the same way but be structurally sound and secure for the family so that they're safe during the next hurricane season
I'm back at the installation and everything turned out perfectly. There was a lot of additional work we had to do to make sure this was installed correctly and secure for the family to feel safe with the windows. And everything, as you can see now, turned out exactly how we wanted it to. The windows are in really secure. Everything turned out great. The energy efficiency is, they're already seeing a big difference in their energy efficiency. Also, they love how clean and open this area looks with going with the style window, with the geometrics above. They're really happy with their decisions they made. They love the fact that they chose a contractor that was gonna take care of everything for them because there was an extreme additional cost involved with making sure this installation went well and there was no additional cost for the homeowner. So they were so happy about that, that everything was taken care of for them with no additional cost to them. So everything turned out really great here. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Tat. So this room normally might be considered an area for a dining room, but right. you did something a little different. Tell us about the space. Well, since we had the dining room essentially as part of the kitchen, it freed up the space so that we could use it for multiple uses. This area here with the three null room chairs is really one of the most inviting in the whole house. Next to the kitchen, we find a cool lounge area where the dining room should be. This seating area could function as an extension to the indoor and outdoor gathering spaces. What was the original space like? Because I know you moved a lot of walls around. Well, originally, actually, the kitchen was on the other side of the wall that's behind you. The dining room seemed to be up towards the front of the house. Wow, so you completely flip-flopped this floor plan, and we have. You did a lot of changes to the windows and doors of this area, bringing in the light. Well, not only did we change all the windows and doors throughout the house to be impact resistant, but believe it or not, there were only two little skinny, small French doors, barely any view to the back. It was really, everything was focused toward the front of the house, towards the street. We flipped it around and focused it towards a beautiful outdoor area. We got rid of the tie beam, which is a concrete beam that runs across the house to tie it all together, and poured a new one up above the ceiling, and we're able to add these transom panels up above the siding glass doors and the fixed windows, which just maximize the amount of light that comes in. And it just plays to the high ceilings and, and all the architecture of the house. It's beautiful. This is like such a great entertainment area. We use this space a lot. Sometimes we'll meet with clients here and Brett will be usually on the computer or we're having a cocktail, lounging, or just hanging out with the kids and our dogs. So it really truly fits your lifestyle and it it's does. fashionable and stylish as well. It does. <laughs> and it's one of our favorite things to do for, for multiple seating areas for clients as well. Yeah, no, it's great. And I love that you talked about your multiple seating areas. I mean, just looking at the island, the table, the desk, you could seat so many people in this area at once. That's and great. we have. Coming up next, the Master Suite has beautiful design features, including one that seems to defy gravity. Wow, the space is beautiful. Thank you. It's our sanctuary. It totally is a sanctuary. Welcome back to Soplo Home Project. We're continuing our designer home tour with Giselle and Brett from B&G Design in their personal home. And now this is your personal sanctuary. The master suite takes up one wing of this house. This amazing space comes with a bed that seems to defy gravity. When we did the reconstruction, one of the things we took advantage of was we re-engineered the trusses and we're able to capture two more feet of ceiling height in this room. Now it peaks at 10 feet. So that, that was pretty major. We actually shrunk the master bedroom a little bit, which seems a little counterintuitive, but we wanted to make more room for closet space, bathroom space, and we opened up the view here to the rear of the house to bring more light in. That definitely was worthwhile. So let's talk about this bed. This is a super cool look. It almost feels like it's floating. I've always wanted a four poster bed, but how do we interpret that into a contemporary way? And this was the way we did it. And you would think in a smaller bedroom that you wouldn't want to enclose it, but we found that it really frames the space. And then when we're laying down in the bed, it just really feels like you're cocooned. So we, we love it. We really enjoy it. It doesn't obstruct the view to the water or to the TV. It really reflects what our style is. 
It's a part of our furniture line. We call it the float bed for obvious reasons because it really looks like it's floating in midair, but it's not. It's you know, just a it's an illusion. Trick. I want to give away the secrets. Right. right. <laughs> One of the things that we love to do also in the headboard is we pitched the bed. A lot of headboards don't have that. That's something that we designed in this bed. As designers, you're thinking yeah. of all the things that, you know, function. Yeah, ergonomics to make this more comfortable. It's all about the details. The wallpaper selections, I see it's everywhere in the room. Was that something you definitely wanted just for the texture? We just feel that wall covering really finishes off the space. Just pure painted walls feels a little naked and this contributed to the sense of being cocooned, being enveloped in the space. We wanted it to feel like we were in a cloud. So part of that metallic is just very subtle. Yes. Gives you that illusion of a little bit of dreaminess. So on this side of the room, I'm assuming this might be custom, correct? It is. Originally, it was just the dresser. So we added the glass ledge, and that gave me an area for me to be able to open up my iPad and work. And it almost has that hotel-like feel by exactly. adding that feature. It's beautiful. Now, the master bathroom, you took a little space in the room to make that larger, correct? It's actually not that large per se, but by the way that we designed it, it feels a lot bigger. One of the key components of the bathroom is what we call a wet room, which is an extra large shower enclosed by glass with the freestanding tub in the shower. We also have an oversized window in the shower. Most people are a little uncomfortable with being so exposed, but in our case, it faces a private garden and it gives us a sense of that, almost like you're in an outdoor shower. We got married in California, and in the hotel we stayed at, it had an outdoor, indoor shower. So when we were designing this, we were like, how do we create that same feeling from that hotel? It gives us such a beautiful picture frame while we're taking a shower. It's all about creating that sanctuary for us. So I love that this room is so light and bright, like your cloud, like yeah. you said, right? But we've got another room that we're gonna check out next that's sort of the complete opposite, so stay with us. Next, on SoFlow Home Project, we explore what used to be the garage, and now is one of the coolest rooms in this house. Welcome back to SoFlow Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we're continuing our home tour with Giselle and Brett from B&G Design in their personal home. And now we're in what used to be the garage, but is now the fam cave. The old two-car garage has been converted into a media room. The space also functions as a music room and home office. But what it really is, is a cool fam cave. Everyone knows what a man cave is, but uh, we all share, the, the whole family shares this room, so we like to call it the fam cave. Giselle twisted my arm just far enough to convince me to convert this garage into a media room. It's now, I think, our go-to spot in the house. As a matter of fact, we lovingly refer to it as the black hole because beginning of the weekend, we kind of get sucked in and then you can't get out. We just saw your master bedroom, light and bright, the cloud, and now this is like a dark, cozy space where you could hang out. I love the dynamic of the two different spaces. We found we needed it. The boys were like, you know, everything was too pristine for them. So this works out really well. They, they have parties here, there'll be pizza boxes, and we're relaxed about it because this is outdoor fabric, this is a commercial carpet, and the finishes are dark. It's a great room that you could just live in. And speaking of like comfort, these sofa beds, I love them. Well, we needed a space that could also double as a guest bedroom. And these day beds are actually full-size mattresses that we have upholstered in performance fabric. We create this leather wrap around and these back bolsters so that you can actually sit back here and it's like a chaise lounge to watch TV and you can really pack a lot of people here or the dog loves it. <laughs> Everyone's, Everyone's gotta love these, they're great. So we've got a lot of great surfaces in this room as well as comfort. I love what you've used on this TV wall. That's a three-dimensional cast concrete tile. We love the texture and kind of the earthiness that it imparts to the room. Yeah, and it gives a little edge too. Right. It's like a mix of everything. Yeah, and, and under that is a leathered finished uh, black granite ledge that is really practical, but also adds more texture. And I'm seeing another classic chair. You've got quite the chair collection here in this yeah. house. All the iconic chairs. I like to sit. <laughs> Beautiful chair. 
I just think what a great way to use the extra garage space, right? It, it was, you know, the debate was, do we do a, a conversion, you know, add on to this house, or do we just do what we did? I think it was well worth it because we have music room, movie room, guest bedroom, you know, storage. It really filled the need that our family had. Giselle and I are fortunate that we've been working together for 19 years, so when we worked together on our own home project, it went really smoothly. I remember after we had the kitchen completed and it was our first meal in this home, I looked at him with tears in my eyes because it was deeply emotional to be living in a home that, that we designed and it was a complete labor of love. You guys did such an amazing job creating this space. Thanks a lot. Thank you. An amazing job with the entire home. So thank you for allowing us to look into your own personal design space as well. Thank you for coming to our home. And to our viewers at home, we hope you enjoyed this designer home tour. And we'll see you again next week for another episode of SoFlo Home Project, only on Local 10. If you missed any part of this home tour, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You can also submit your design disasters, and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we head to Brickle and see how an award-winning designer turned this 80s classic penthouse into a contemporary work of art.